Hey, good afternoon there, or good morning on the West Coast. This is Daniel Holzberger from Van Michael Salons, and we're actually here at my house, myself and my good friend, Miss Becca Job, who's getting ready to do a nice haircut for you guys. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna have Becca cut a uh, disconnected bob, and while she's doing it, I want everybody to ask as many questions as possible. I'm gonna be filming her, um, but I'll keep my eye on the comments constantly, so we can ask Becca how it's going. And uh, we're gonna get cut in hair right away, okay? So. Hello. All right, cool. I'm so excited to be here, guys. Thank you so much for having me, for hosting me here, Brian, Daniel. Thank you so much. Um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna get going. Um, so I'm gonna be starting off with a graduate box section. This is where it's gonna be disconnected. Um, this is gonna be my undercut for the haircut. So I did this haircut um, for a show in St. Augustine, and it goes by pretty quick. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. I'm only gonna shake here for a second. So I'm pulling it out, let's have the head tilted down with my first graduated section. Man, we're getting calls or um, viewers from the UK, from Pakistan. Oh, uh -oh from KSA, <laughs> we've got it all over the place. Um, it's awesome that uh, we're getting so much uh, content being viewed uh, from Canada now, um, all over. We love doing these for Hairbrained. Um, this is the third Hairbrained Live that we've done consecutively this year. And about once a month, Van Michael Salons, we're doing our best to have uh, to add some education and to help uh, inspire people and educate people around the world. And we're really happy to be, uh, it, you know, having this partnership with Gerard and with uh, Courtney and everybody at Hairbrain. They've really been great to us. Uh, also, we're getting in from Ireland, from Australia. Man, another one from Australia. Love seeing all of these uh, of our international friends. I hope everybody's <laughs> enjoying it. And then we've got somebody from uh, Douglasville, Georgia. Hello, <laughs> That's where I'm from. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, so just your typical pivoting, sectioning, you know, like you would do if you were doing a graduated bob. Um, as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of expansion from dry hair. We're gonna, we're just gonna let it live. It's gonna be all right. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Also too, I like that expansion because that's gonna help whenever I cut this section, whenever it falls over, it's just gonna kind of push it out just a little bit more. It's gonna look, it's gonna look cool. So um, I'm on my last section on the left side. So if you see, Becca is cutting dry hair, which, you know, it's not something that, a lot of people will ask, you know, do you always cut dry? Do you always cut wet? Uh, one thing that we have in our training program is we want people to be able to do both um, and sometimes for different textures for different shapes it is better to actually cut dry sometimes it's better to cut wet and most of the time it's good to cut both you know so i don't want you guys to think that we're saying you can only cut this shape dry we could definitely cut it either way but what she was mentioning about the fact that the hair will expand what happens is when the hair is wet the hair stays together during the cut. And when it is dry, it actually jumps a little bit more. So what ends up happening is it gets a little bit more of an expansion with the dry cutting. You can actually see that angle right there, how her graduation is standing out. So when you have this disconnected panel that's gonna fall over top of it, we're gonna get a little bit more volume, a little bit more movement, a little bit of a messier effect because it was cut dry. Uh, she's still cutting this very clean. I mean, I don't know if you guys had noticed on her cross check on the left side, when she went back through horizontally, the shape was still very clean, very precise. We're still cutting precision hair cutting just doing it dry to give a little bit of a different effect. Um, you could totally do this um, with wet hair as well, um, but you're gonna get a little bit of a different effect if you cut it wet. Now, the, somebody uh, just wrote in, what angle is she cutting? Right now what she's doing is she's basing it off of the nape of the hair. So when she's kind of working near the occipital bone, you would call that say like a 45 degree angle. Yep. But now if you see how her fingers have went down a little bit, she's probably more somewhere at like a 30 degree angle. So really you're gonna change your angle based on the head's shape. Because once you get around that mastoid bone right where she is, the head dips in. So it's gonna go a little bit lower in elevation. So it looks like you're getting right through, almost through the end of this section. Yeah, yeah. Looking good. I'm not 
like mad about it. I actually kind of like it expanding, you know, like whenever I initially did this haircut at home and I saw all the expansion, I almost went through the artist process where it was just like, this is crap, this is crap. And then like, you know, you get done with it and you're like, I'm into that. I really like that a lot. So checking my balance. Looking pretty good. I'm not going to focus too much on the outline here. I'm going to wait to the very end because I am going to take it shorter than this. Um, I feel like sometimes we get so nervous about what it's looking like during the process that we psych ourselves out. But trust what you know and just keep going. Um, but right now, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to move on. Okay. Cool. Also, too, um, like I said, trust your process. Um, you know, so whenever I even do these next few sections, you're going to notice expansion again. We're going to go through with an iron after to polish everything off. I'm going to set the head right up. I had her tilted down because I wanted a little bit more of a dramatic angle with my graduation underneath. So my sectioning now is from ear to ear, and I am going to work a flat layering technique across the back round of the head. So I'm going to be working around opposed to straight up just square. So I don't want to create a flat plane through the back, I just want to flatten out the round. So it's actually going to hug the head shape like really pretty, and it's also going to collapse a lot of that weight. So it looks, it's going to look pretty good. Um, I did this haircut for a show, like I said, in St. Augustine. And, you know, when you're, when you're working with models, um, it's, it's, you, you got you to gotta kind of get a little bit more creative, like as far as like, you know, you just, you don't want to, you don't want to step on their toes, you don't want to make them feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, you want to be as creative as possible. And I didn't want to do just plain square. I wanted to do something that looked a little bit more funky and took off a, look, a lot more hair. So this is actually going to put a good amount of hair on the floor. So it's a cool show cut. Does that make sense? <laughs> so actually right now we've got a few more people coming in from Lake Havasu, Arizona, Jamaica, oh. Malta, all over. That's cool. Okay. So a, uh, a Question just came in from Susan Friend. What if the back of the head is flat or bulbous? So basically what she just said is she wanted it to kind of round off on the side so that it didn't end up being too square. Now, if they had a flat head, you would definitely continue what you're doing. But if they did have an extremely round head, you may use a little bit of over direction just to gain some weight through those sides so that it does somewhat flatten out. Um, also, too, I, if they are significantly more flat, I agree, Daniel, I feel like definitely work that round for sure. Um, I think that, if, as we all know, if you're flatter through here and then you do something square, then we are really just going to flatten everything out. It's going to be too much. Um, but I am going to start off with my first initial what would be a square section. So I always like to preserve a little bit more length just in case and see how it falls. So I'm going to start off a little bit longer. And I, somebody just in from Switzerland, from Washington State, What's up, people all over the place. We love seeing everybody from around the world. Uh, one thing that I wanted to actually comment on something that Becca had said. So we did go do a show together uh, last year in St. Augustine, Florida. And I, I told Becca I absolutely loved the finished look of what she did on stage. Um, the thing about it is this. A lot of times you go into a hair show or you're going into um, collaborating for a photo shoot and you've got an idea in your head, but then you have a model who says, well, you know, I, I'm not really digging that. I'm not, so you have to make adjustments. And one thing that I've always believed, um, you know, for probably 20 years now is even though you may have an idea that you want to cut and it might be absolutely perfect, if you do something that makes your model feel unattractive, she's gonna look unattractive. So by Becca making the little adjustments for her model when we did that show, her model really walked the runway so well. She took pictures very well because she was feeling how beautiful she was. What's really funny is like, you know, remember when we got off stage, like, did 
they know what they look like, but I feel like they knew who they felt, you know, and I feel like your consultation process, even with models, has to be reassuring, has to be nice, has to be um, accepting of who they are as people. You don't want to push them too hard, you know, because then they feel they just won't even look good to begin with. So, um, real quick, so stepping in here, I want you guys to be able to see Initially, when I started doing this at home and I saw this weird expansion and this weird like um, sparseness through the ends, I was like, all right, this isn't gonna work. But I have done this haircut on a human being before. It totally works. Once we get to the polishing process and then once we get to the detailing process at the end, it's, it's a really cool way to cut a bob. So not only is it creative, but I think this is pretty classic. You can totally do this within the salon. Um, yeah, so. So the couple of questions that are coming in, we are getting people from Scotland, um, Guyana. We've got people from North Carolina. Uh, one thing, two things. Um, the one question that was, is being asked is, it's a, us to go back over about the dry instead of wet. It's not that you cannot cut this wet. You absolutely could. The thing about the cutting it dry is you're gonna get a little bit more expansion and a little bit more texture when you cut dry because of the way that the hair will expand. Um, the hair's already dry when it's wet. The hair tends to kind of lay together. So you're gonna get a little bit more expansion, a little more texture, and a little more volume by cutting it dry. It, it's not a shape that cannot be cut wet. It can absolutely be cut wet or dry but we just wanted to show you how you get a different effect by cutting dry on this shape uh, then another question was why um, won't you take your guide from the nape no you're not taking your guide from the nape for this panel because it's a completely disconnected panel the um, the panel is actually a little um, the, or the underneath is not supposed to connect with the top. The underneath is only supposed to actually act as support for the top. Again, we had just mentioned about dry hair, how we were wanting to make the hair expand. That graduation on the underneath is going to expand the panel on top. So that's why they're not, uh, the, the guide is not being taken from the underneath. Also, a little bit of info about dry cutting too. I'm sure all of you know, but when you go to raise hair up and it's dry, it's very slick. So it's actually kind of a little bit um, more difficult to grip. So you've got to really, really take, I would say, smaller than usual sections to stay clean. And then also, too, to maintain tension. So working with the very tips of my shears, I'm coming off flat, rounding, or excuse me, I'm coming off the round of the head, implementing a flat layer. Trying not to elevate too much. I can even see it where I may have gained a little bit of length because I elevated. I'm gonna go back through right here. Yeah, see that? That's okay. I need to take it off. Cool. One thing that you do need to think about with this whenever you're cutting with dry hair, just just as um, the hair will expand, the hair will slip when it's dry. So always make sure that you're only cutting to your second knuckle uh, because your tension once you get past your second knuckle will loosen up it loosens up with wet hair as well but especially with dry hair that hair will tend to buckle it'll tend to slip and you won't be able to keep your work nearly as precise also too you can see how i've um implemented clips into keeping all my other sections out of the way Cutting hair dry, you absolutely have to. I, I even did it on stage, you know. It might look a little funky, but it's what you gotta do to stay clean and precise. So uh, there's a question is, so the key is to cut it longer than the length of the nape, am I right? Absolutely yes, yes. correct, yes. absolutely correct. What's happening is the actual outline of this whole overall look will be from this panel. The underneath is not the actual outline of the of the end result, the, the look is end result. It is going to, but the underneath is merely going to act as support for the top. So the top can look nice and airy, nice and textured, but then at the same time have volume and expansion and expansion because it's cut dry and because there is graduation underneath pushing up on the hair above the occipital bone. See how I kind of reserved that little bit of length? It's because I elevated a little bit too much. That's okay. Now, I'm going back over my lines twice because it helps me stay clean. 
I want it to be as precise as possible. I am going to implement texture at the end um, where I point cut, um, where I detail, what have you, just like I would anything else. Um, also, too, I want you to see this really quick. So, my cross check, or excuse me, I'm not pulling straight out like this because that's square. We're working off the round of the head, so I know I'm balanced because I'm working off the round, right? Um, cool. So anyway, like I said, my, um, I'm not, I, I know what this looks like. It looks a little wild, but it won't. It's, it's just, again, trusting what you know, trusting your techniques, trusting your shapes, um, and keep it moving. You can always detail, you can always finish, and you can always flat iron at the end, but we're going to keep it moving. And I'm um, actually getting uh, uh, quite a few people mentioning how much they're really liking this, how much they love the shape, and uh, I'm happy to hear that. I think that in all honesty, this is a look that is very wearable with multiple different textures of hair, multiple uh, different age groups. You know, a lot of times people kind of get into this, this mindset that just because there's disconnection, you know, it's only for a hairdresser or somebody who's edgy it's to have. Too funky yeah, it's too funky, but something like this can be extremely wearable. Now, if you kind of work it up with color and you make a different color in each panel, then all of a sudden you may find that the disconnection is too edgy for, you know, the everyday person. However, if you do you know, keep the color really soft, really pretty, you're gonna find that you can uh, use this kind of a look on everyone. So staying consistent. This is my hard side because I tend to push this way and then I preserve length. So being mindful of that, placing my comb right on the head, pulling straight out. You can see where I went past my second knuckle right here, where I preserved a little bit too much length. That's okay. It's better than losing a lot of length. I'm not perfect. Sometimes that happens. Um, hairdressers to start pulling on hair and checking for balance. Really be mindful of where you're pulling from and then assess. Oh man, that looks so good. Yay. Good feeling. Uh, okay. Moving on. Pivoting. Going to clip the hair that I am not cutting out of the way. Going to do it on the other side also. Yeah, that's something that's really important, especially when you start talking about dry cutting. Uh, the hair moves so much more when it's dry. It, um, it expands, it moves, it slips, gravity pulls it. It, it just is, ends up in your way unless you secure it. Uh, whereas with wet hair, if you've got hair that's really wet, you can use the fine teeth of the comb and really hold stuff uh, in place. You can almost like uh, mold the hair where it needs to be. But with dry hair, I really strongly suggest making sure you use your clips to you know, secure the hair that you're not working, uh, make sure it's out of the way. People are saying beautiful, lots of hearts and eyes. Um, Love the way this looks already. Then the, another question, are we supposed to keep the interior longer as the finger position is parallel to the parting? So that's a really good question. The asking if the interior is supposed to be kept longer, it depends on where you're talking about on the head. So if you're talking about right at the occipital bone, that's gonna be the shortest point of the interior because you're talking about a flat plane, something that's parallel to the wall, perpendicular to the floor. Because it's a straight up and down line, 
The occipital bone sticks out the farthest, therefore that's gonna be the shortest piece of the interior shape. And then up at the crown where the head dips in, that's gonna be the longest point of the interior shape. So yes, you are maintaining length, but you're also removing weight and removing bulk because you're cutting at 90 degrees straight up and down. Um, However, one other thing that happens is once you get above the parietal ridge or the crown in the back, because of the head starts to diminish, you actually create what's considered internal graduation. So that will actually build some weight or build some volume in the crown. So you get two things from this shape. You get the graduation at the occipital bone that pushes up that hair that's flat, and then you get the graduation again right at the top of the crown, so that gives you volume as well. And by cutting it dry, it allows this shape to be um, a little bit more expanded, a little bit more textured, and have a little bit of more voluminous movement than it would be if it was cut wet. And both of the two graduation techniques that happen in the back of this head let the hair move a bit more. There's just breathability about it, you know, and I feel like that's the direction that hair has gone, you know, at least in the last uh, five years. You know, it's about movement. It's about not so perfect. You know, your technique can most certainly be perfect. You can be, I think it's important to have that, you know, that kind of training behind you. However, you know, whenever it comes to wearing hair, like, God, man, do y'all feel like brown brushing your hair every day? Because I don't. Um, and I do not. And I typically cut hair in that way. So I like for hair to move. I like for there to be a lot of layering if possible, you know. Um, and, you know, there's going to be structure about this, too. So that's what's so cool about this technique is that, you know, I'm, I'm taking off a lot of hair, you know, so I really feel like a hairdresser in this moment. And then also, too, like, I'm, I'm building a shape all the while, like, taking away so much weight. So it's really cool. So another question about the why would you dry cut versus wet? You could cut this haircut wet, absolutely. The real reason that we're doing it is just for the extra expansion and a little bit of extra volume that you're going to get by cutting dry. Dry hair tends to jump more than wet hair. So that's, that's the biggest reason. Another thing about it is the hair works for this. Um, these are, this is a really good mannequin. It was actually given to us by a good friend of mine, Adam Federico. Uh, I don't know if you guys follow the Federico Advanced Academy on Facebook and on Instagram. They put up great images. They have some great classes that they are always holding, um, both in Sacramento where they're based, as well as when they, um, internationally. Uh, I've taken lots of classes with them, but this mannequin is really silky. I mean, you can see the polish on the hair. So cutting this mannequin dry is perfectly fine. Some mannequins have, uh, let's just say, less than perfect hair. And because of that, if you were to try to cut it dry, it may, the expansion actually may make it look really frizzy and chewed. This is the kind of hair that you can work with though, dry. Okay, one more time for those of you that are just joining us. So um, I'm talking about a flat layer technique that is going to move around the head in the back. And what I explained a little bit ago was typically whenever you're working with flat layering, square layering, what have you, when you pull out, and this is, you know, it's meant to be um, with square, flat, a lot of people get confused because I'm talking about flat, so they automatically think square. So obviously you're not going to be even here. But because we're working with the round of the head, even, right? Cool. Just again, just to reiterate. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to work on the top. <laughs> this is fun. Because this is going to be something where you take away a lot of hair too. So, I'm going to keep the back section off just so I don't get messy. I'm going to take a couple of these actually. All right. So now, this middle back, that's going to be my section working shorter to longer in the front. So once again, somebody's asking about um, dry versus wet. Well, we're gonna keep um, reiterating on this that this hair can work with the dry cutting in, uh, technique and that dry hair 
it will expand, it will move, it will slip. It has more reaction than wet hair does. So in a situation like this, if you are cutting a flat uh, panel in the back, it will actually give you a little bit more volume. So that, that's the big reason that we're doing it dry. That and then just to show you an, another way of cutting a disconnected bob and not just always having to cut it wet and then blow drying the hair. Uh, it's, it's just another way of cutting it. It's not that you can only do this dry. It's just in this, exper in this situation with this type of hair in particular, this silky smooth hair, we like to, it's, it, we like to cut this dry. You know, I, I played around with. I, I, I did it just to see if it would even work, and then it just ended up, you know, kind of all falling together. So, okay, real quick, I sectioned out my sides on the top because I want to stay as clean as possible. I am working this whole section, but I am going to divide the section just so, again, I can stay as clean as possible. Again, because we're implementing so many different layering techniques, I want to make sure that I maintain um, my, my technique stay as clean as possible. Um, yeah, so stop, drop, keep going. And that little technique that she's just done, it, it's so true. Anytime you have any kind of a mohawk type section, uh, something that goes all the way from the crown to the front hairline, I mean, you can even be talking about with a man's haircut. It's really important to just work to your second knuckle and then resection. Work to your second knuckle, resection, because otherwise you can just lose a lot of the hair and it becomes um, a lot less, a lot less precision based. And I know what it looks like. I mean, what it feels like to be in a hurry. I, I, I run on the forty-five without a lunch at the salon. You know, like I know what it feels like to get all that hair in your hands and just go, but. Ultimately, it ends up biting me in the butt. You know, a lot of times I've cut myself, or you know, I've not done the best work as you know I possibly could. It's just better to just take the time, breathe it out, section it out right. Just even looks better, you know. So also to your client, it feel better. Anyway, so now I'm going to be pushing on both sides all of the hair up to that center section. It is going to be a stationary guide. Real quick, just to reiterate. I created my guide based off of the back. So that center back is where I have connected that layer into, and I'm working shorter to longer to preserve length in the front. Cool. And she just mentioned that she, this is now gonna become a stationary guide. So all of, the, all of the hair on each side is gonna kind of sandwich up into the center, which will, because of the roundness of the head, will, call, will do, cause something that I call natural inversion. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create a slight concave shape horizontally, while this is also a concave shape vertically because she's working short to long. Now concave is gonna remove more weight than any other type of cutting. So by cutting this shape, it means, and the fact that it's dry, we're really gonna remove a lot of weight and you're gonna see a lot of um, natural texture, movement, and volume through the hair because we're creating a concave shape, a concave technique, as well as a um, cutting the hair dry. Sometimes this is a lot easier for me in the salon because I am standing right in front of a mirror and I can pay attention to whether or not I'm pushing too much or I'm pulling too much or if I'm coming straight off the head like I'm supposed to. I'm working with my easy side so I tend to be a little bit better behaved with it. On the other side it'll get hard for me. Okay, I'm just going to recheck my line. I'm going to push this if needed. The reason that I'm dividing off 
but still pushing to the middle is because, again, it just helps me stay clean. So it, I can most certainly bunch all of that hair up in my hand, but also, again, to touch back on the fact that we're cutting dry, the hair is so slick. If you try to gather all of that hair into your hands, like, it, like Daniel said, there's not equal tension throughout your fingers. You can even see the gap in my fingers right here. So it's just helping me stay clean. It's helping me stay consistent. funny clients do pick up on the smallest things i used to work next to a guy who uh let's just say he didn't keep his station real clean and if you would ever look at my station it looks very similar to like a doctor's operating table i keep it as clean as possible and one of uh one of his clients uh made a comment and said man look at how clean you keep your station and i said well yeah i got a little bit of ocd in me and she goes oh yeah it looks really nice and she's like look at my guys i don't even know if he knows where his scissors are in there oh so we made a nice little joke about it and laughed about it six weeks later all of a sudden she had booked an appointment with me so it is things like that, like keeping your station clean, keeping your sectioning clean, keeping everything really precise, especially in this day and age, people really pay attention to everything. So, you know, those little points of difference by doing clean sectioning, do clean work, you know, holding your scissors properly, you know, actually showing that you're taking that extra effort to make sure everything is done properly, that really does go far in a client's mind. The things that you don't think that they notice, they absolutely do. What is the name of the doll head? I want it. Okay, so this is actually a doll head from the Federico Advanced Academy. Um, if you log on to their Facebook, it's uh, Federico Advanced. They, I do believe they have a, uh, a website connect, um, link in which you can buy their, uh, their doll heads from them. They're phenomenal, phenomenal mannequins. You know. Just real quick, um, this whole bit is going up. So everything that I separated from ear to front, everything's going up and everything's getting cut. I just wanted to say that, sorry. And we've got somebody who just logged in from Bolivia. We've got people all over the world logging in today. This has really been exciting to have so many people all across the, the world logging on. Thank you all. I'm having a good time. I finally stopped shaking. Somebody just made a comment, and I believe this had, it was headed into reference of us talking about clean sectioning, clean stations, clean everything. They're paying for a professional service. They deserve professionalism. Absolutely. You know, um, I s really, really feel like this, and um, our boss, Van Council, has been talking about this a lot, especially in the wake of, uh, you know, everybody going back to work after the, the corona pandemic. They are looking for professionalism. You know, I mean, that doesn't mean you can't, that you can't rent a booth, but, or you have to work in some big salon. It just means you, everything needs to be really professional. Everything needs to seem like you take time and effort in everything you do because people don't want to go places that kind of half-ass their work this, in this day and age. So you, so quick, like, bit, like that white background, like that. So you can kind of see how much longer I've gotten. What's going to be the most fun part about this, again, is going to be the detailing work afterwards. I'm going to show you guys kind of how to slice through this. I'm going to leave the front longer. Um, it's a really cool creative haircut, and that bit right here, that layering that we just did, will mesh in with the back. So I know that you guys are probably able to see, you know, the chunks and the lines through here. Just don't worry about it. Like, that is just going to create such a pretty round shape once we get through to um, flat ironing it all. And it's just, it's just so cool. 
So, sorry, Daniel. No, you're great. We're getting people that are uh, just logged on from Bali, someone logged on from Yorkshire in the UK, uh, someone here from Boston. Uh, definitely love hearing that people are logging in from all around the world. And just to give you a recap of for those of you who've just logged in, this haircut that Becca's cutting started off in the nape with a disconnected, uh, basically graduated bob-like section and used just classic pivoting graduation through the nape, then disconnected a entire panel um, by a couple of inches longer than that undercut and cut the hair flat so that we could create a, um, a little bit more of a disconnected layer that has some volume. And then that shape rounded through from ear to ear, and now she's been using the guide from the crown to create a concave technique through the top in which everything is being inverted into the center, which actually creates both a concave shape horizontally as well as a concave technique vertically. So that's where we're working on now is she's on the second half of that top side and the hair's really, because it's being cut dry, it's really starting to expand, it's starting to move and it's actually showing a lot more texture. We've got some people who just logged in from Kentucky, Montana, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, some more people from Australia. We've had a lot of people from Australia today, which is great. And someone who just is letting us know that um, a, a, they are just lo the qualified for, as a hairdresser. And have we got any advice for hairdresser interviews? Yes, I have a whole bunch of <laughs> advice for interviewing people. Yeah. Because here's the truth of the matter, right now, you definitely want to get, you know, put your best foot forward and get hired, but you also wanna make sure that you're getting hired by the right salon. You, so you need to ask a lot of questions. And one of the questions I'm really big on asking just right off the bat is, how long have you been in business and how many employees do you have? Because here's the thing that I think about. So let's just say somebody's been in business for 20 years and they only have two employees. What's that say to you? Nobody probably wants to work for that person. So I don't necessarily that think that that's going to be a great fit for you. Whereas if somebody's been open for 20 years and they've got 200 employees, obviously people like working for him. And ask how long have people worked here? You know, is the whole staff only been there for six months? Because that probably says that you're not going to be able to be there for very long. And one thing that I will say about this industry, the quickest way to lose your clientele is to constantly be moving salons. Uh, the people I know that stay at the same salon and same location for 10, 20 years are the busiest people I know. And the people that jump around from salon to salon to salon, no matter how good they are, how great of customer service they give, clients eventually get sick of moving around. They, they like the consistency. So uh, another question, we got some people from Pennsylvania, Ireland, India. Um, can we can we cut occipital part into a solid form, keeping the nape the same like the one she cut? Might seem like a stupid question. It's not a stupid question at all. That's not that's actually a great question. But yes, you could absolutely make a, a solid outline from it. You're going to have somewhat of a solid shape. If also, if you were to cut this wet, it's going to be more of a solid shape because the hair is going to collapse together rather than expand apart. Um, We've got uh, someone asking, wish out stylists in our area. Um, oh, okay, I got what you're saying. But, you know, I think that cutting techniques can be used all over, you know, all kinds of different techniques. A lot of times what we were talking about earlier with this shape, this is a disconnected shape, and this is a shape that's not the... Um, you know, the most normal bob in the world, but by no means is this such an aggressive shape that a client wouldn't want to wear this. Oh, so definitely techniques like this are just things that you have to think about uh, just showing images of and kind of talking to your clients in consultations about so that you can create a edgier look or, or talk them into doing some disconnection, something that does push the boundaries of what you're doing day in and day out. Uh, question is, what's the name of this cut? 
I would probably call this a disconnected um, A-line uh, bob. That's what I would probably call this haircut. Uh, I don't necessarily have a true name for it per se, but that the actual technique would be, you know, a disconnected shape on the underneath with a lot of A-line uh, layering through the top. Well, and again, you know, like, think about what you know. And don't think that you can only use techniques in one box. You can most certainly combine techniques. It's just a matter of kind of like visualization, you know, and it's a matter of just practicing on a mannequin and seeing if it works. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, this has been really cool because I've even done this in the salon a couple of times, but a shorter version. And again, like seeing this now, I can totally see where you're like, well, who the heck would wear that? But man, we're gonna go shorter. We're gonna we're gonna take this outline up for sure. And then we're going to slice through here, and then I'm gonna incorporate a fringe, and it's it's gonna be quite surprising. It'll, it looks so much more solid than it actually is. Like whenever you see it at the end, the thing that looks the most shattered is just gonna be the sides. So um, really quick, I am going to touch up back with an iron. We're going to make it super cool. Just before I go into my outline. So I'm actually going to leave my graduation, disconnected uh, graduation in the back undercut. I'm going to leave that alone. I like that expansion. I like that push out that I've, that I've got from it. So I don't want to flatten it out too much. Cool. I feel like a lot of people, whenever they go into iron, they always put their irons at the hot, hot, hottest. Um, I'm using 390 on an iron that goes up to 450. Um, something that I learned from Mario at Zaget is that you want to be just as precise with your flat ironing as you do your cutting. It can still be quick, but just be meticulous. And we got this mannequin pretty darn sharp, you know? It's already flat, so I don't need to crank it out and burn it up. So I'm just polishing right now. Somebody um, just asked, would this cut work with natural curly hair? Absolutely it would. The only thing you may want to cut, think about is really around the front when you do your fringe, how that fringe is gonna look curly. You may end up leaving it a little bit longer of a fringe if you're gonna wear it curly so that it can part on one side or the other. Uh, whereas I know that Becca's planning on bringing up a, a fairly short fringe in this haircut. So uh, that's really the only part of this haircut that wouldn't work real well on curly hair. Uh, I actually think that this haircut looks just as good, if not better, with texture. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of straight, smooth hair. It, it's just kind of my background. I've always been into it. But at the same time, I feel like it, it definitely is very useful, this kind of a technique, especially the disconnection uh, through the back, that kind of rounded, flat panel that works so well with curly hair. And then uh, a couple of other people are logging on again. Someone from Newfoundland. Uh, Hong Kong, we've got uh, some people all over the world, which is really nice to, for everybody to, you know, come in. And then uh, everybody is just coming in and saying hi, and we we love the fact that we've got so many people all around watching watching this. That's so cool, I love that. Okay, I'm not gonna go crazy here on the front with the iron, I'm almost done. And then we've got the so when it comes to outlines, I feel like that's where you can get, I feel like this whole thing's pretty creative, but that's where you can get really creative. I'm gonna stick to a solid, really strong outline. It's gonna look, it's gonna look like a classic bob, although it's got so much internal and external texture. Okay. You can see I'm not I'm not going crazy with the iron. You don't need to. The blow dryer is fantastic, Daniel. <laughs> Looks so good. Now, just like any other haircut, you can most certainly see these lines. We'll just point cut that out, you know? No stress. I'm putting these down a lot. I'm not going to get this for a year. Okay. All right, well. 
Well, we got people from Italy. We got people from London. Somebody's actually asking a question about um, in interviewing what to, what to wear um, for you know to, when you're going into the uh, salon. Um, really, what I would do is I would go uh, get an actual service at that salon before anything and see what everybody looks like. That way, you can know if you if they actually have the same kind of style that you do. People are asking about curly hair, a couple of different things. Um, you know, absolutely, somebody had made a comment about the the fringe. If you're going to do a fringe with the curly hair, should you um, leave it a little bit longer? I absolutely would so that it can move. But, you know, it is very important that you just let that hair kind of move on its own and see where it's going to fall. And that will, ver that will actually make it much more uh, precise when it comes to creating that fringe. You guys can see Becca's cutting out her outline now. Just using the tips of her shears. because I'm stabilizing. And I do this in the salon all the time. I will resection a bob back out dry. And I feel like that's really where perfecting a bob comes in. You know, I can cut it clean while it's wet as the day is long, but it doesn't, hair sticks together whenever it's wet. And sometimes you miss spots and sometimes, you know, you don't get everything that you, should have tilting the head. I gotta tilt it down. Just, okay, that'll be fine. Somebody just wrote in, "Dang, that's a badass haircut." Oh, I definitely agree. Cool. Thank y'all. My southern twang's coming out. Get emotional. It's just a fun way to do it because now, like, just like forget about everything else. This looks like a normal bob. You know, it's just a different way to do things. And I, I don't know about y'all, but I mean, we get bored. We all get bored. And so it's fun to play around. It's fun to do something different, you know. And the, this both layering techniques completely complement a ball, you know. Okay. So we're almost to the point where, come on, girl. I need to go to the gym, I guess. All right. We're actually getting a lot of people from Brazil now. Oh, well, that's really cool to see. That's really cool. Okay. Actually, one person just wrote in that this would actually look great on her daughter. Oh, cool. How old's your daughter? Oh, she's super cool. Okay, we're almost to the stop. I'm gonna uh, crank out the other side and then we're gonna move on to the side. So the head does not just move up and down, as we know, there's all around. That's why I'm moving it all around to make sure that no matter which way she looks, no matter which way she goes, she's gonna have a solid line here in the back. <laughs> she says her daughter's 35. Right on. Yeah. Cool. This should be an easy one to talk her into then. Yeah. 
Some people from Pennsylvania, from Vegas logging on now. You're good, you're good. Got a friend from uh, Nova Scotia, Canada, who's just logged on and or just uh, chimed in and said that this is an awesome haircut. And oh I gosh, absolutely yeah. agree with them. Okay, so you can also, like, I know a lot of people like to just, you know, tilt the wrist and, you know, continue that, their outline. I don't feel comfortable like that. So I'm starting in the middle of the hair and just matching up with the rest of my line. So, you know, I'm not starting all the way back here because God forbid I mess up. Um, you know, so right about here. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to also, because especially when the hair is dry, to be cutting up because you're going against gravity, and gravity will give you that tension, whereas if you cut in the direction of the gravity, sometimes it will go away. From The, the hair will go away from the scissor. We have people in from South America, uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Quite a few people logging on and saying how this is a great haircut. I think all of us do that because then you end up really just like focusing in on those lines, you know, especially when you're just using the tips of your shear because you know that you, you want to make sure you don't like, basically you don't want to mess up. You want to get really become like laser focused. Right. Well, and you know, sometimes I'll get a little slack jaw. <laughs> I just get way too into it, <laughs> you know. One young lady it says that she's 65 and got her hair cut into an angled bob, but it didn't look like that, that you're oh, awesome. Well, come on over to Atlanta, I got you, girl. Yeah. People logging on from London. Are salons in London open yet? No, they're not open until July. The Netherlands. much you stand on top of it and you tell yourself it looks super precise super clean you know and it does but you know like a mirror is going to be your best friend in the salon and it's it helps you see everything you don't see even at you know just eye value so you know i know a lot of us kind of get embarrassed you know to turn our clients around i don't know why there's some stigma with that but i turn all a lot of my bob clients around and look at that that line in the back you know, that's something that they don't see every day, but the people around them see it. So it sounds right. Yeah, I, I'm a big proponent for uh, actually working with my back to the mirror for a large amount of the haircut so that I can, you know, definitely see a little bit of, of you know, give myself a little bit of a perspective on what the hair looks like from, you know, a little bit farther away. Because if you don't, what ends up happening is the second they walk out, or walking out the door, you'll see something from far away that you're like, damn, I wish I just would have seen that yeah, one piece to refine. I watch people leave. Yeah. It's so crazy. Someone named Alex just uh, uh, mentioned that uh, they've been doing hair for 27 years and have done this cut so many times, but love that you can always learn something new. This cut is awesome. Oh, man, love hearing that. <laughs> Somebody logging on saying that they uh, actually that they need a haircut badly. <laughs> and then uh, Maidstone, England, great cut. And then from uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, right around the corner down here in the south with us. Okay, so something really quick. So I have her head tilted over here. And with creative work a lot of times, sometimes we don't have the time in the salon. And don't beat yourself up about that. It's it's cool. It happens. But... I've got the time, you know, and so even over here, whenever I have the head tilted, you can see all these little tiny imperfections. You know, you can just crank those out. That's what's gonna help your cuts look so good in photos and videos. You know, if you just take the time to kind of come underneath, make sure that you're not taking any hair away from up here, back here, but 
all angles, you know? That's why bobs are so much fun. I remember um, when I first started teaching, if Spencer's watching, I love you, Spencer. Um, that dude worked on one bob for four hours with me. And it was just, it wasn't even like what, what to dry. It was whenever we got it dry, I was like, well, what about this? Well, what about this? And now I watch that dude cut a bob in the salon and man, so good. So Spencer, I love you. Thanks for enduring four hours worth of bob with me. I'll never forget. <laughs> Someone logged on that her husband wants her to get this cut, but she's so nervous Aww. since hers is long. Oh, how long? Yeah. Long, really long? So somebody uh, logged on and or, uh, just chimed in and said that, you know, they can't blow dry at the moment due to COVID restrictions. Therefore, mm -hmm. we can cut we can cut wet, but I can't do the detailing needed. The majority of the clients are being ironed first and cut dry, which allows us to really perfect the shape and texture with Absolutely. precision. Um, this is, I do, oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So when we opened up our salons for the first month, we weren't, or six weeks, we weren't allowed to blow dry either. And now that we're allowed to, again, it it's makes things a lot better to be able to, you know, do whatever you need to do. But absolutely, we, we were big proponents for clients coming in with dry hair and then smoothing them out and then cutting them dry. I, I feel like it ended up giving us better results than if we would have just cut them and let them leave wet. Oh, I ran behind the whole time, you know, and it's what it is. We were off of work for what, six weeks? You know? Yeah. Okay, so do you want me to turn her around? No, you're around? good. Okay, cool. So we're going to transition into the sides before I start texturizing the back and all of that. So pretty happy with that line thus far. Um, maybe a little bit more through here, but I'll focus on that in just a second. Um, I'm going to keep it moving because it will never be good enough. I could work on this for six hours. Okay, so instead of just chomping through and just creating like a straight line, I'm going to kind of put the comb up. I'm going to start grabbing with my fingers. So something that I learned in a Seiko class with Richard Ashforth, right? Is that yeah. his name? Okay. Um, so is instead of gripping the hair like this, there's too much tension. And sometimes when you put too much tension, you're forcing the hair too much. It'll bounce up too much. We're going to lightly grip that hair. And I'm going to start at my line here and start working my way down. Using only my thumb. Ta -da. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. And you can see she's open and closing those shears. She's not just slicing right through. By opening and closing, it adds just a little bit of movement, adds a little bit of a cutting technique versus just tearing the blade against the, against the hair. This leaves the, the cuticle of the hair in much better condition. Now I have no tension on the hair at all. Visual. As long as you're in control of your tool and you have a pretty clear and concise idea of what you're going for, allow yourself to kind of cut freely in this way. You know, this is where it gets super fun and super creative and super different. This is going to be something that separates you from other styles. Now I've got my finger on the back of my blade, just slicing through. Because I am cutting in a downward motion and pushing the hair forward, it is only naturally going to fall forward. Also too, all of these layers in the back are going to push forward. Someone said that you're making this look effortless, and it's absolutely true. 
But, you know, really the reason it, she's making it look effortless is because she's just going a little bit at a time. She's opening and closing the scissors and letting the hair move and fall where it wants to fall. And touch the hair, y'all. Like, start moving it, you know, move it back and forth all around, see how it's going to fall. Because I don't love the fact that if they were to kind of push some of their hair back, that they're going to have any of this business back here. So, very simply, I'm not going to chomp into it and chomp it off. I'm just going to create that internal texture. You guys can hear my stomach growling on camera, I'm sorry. I'm over here breathing like, whoop. <laughs> Somebody says they're ready to get a flight out to you. Come on. Come on in. Down. Atlanta airport's open. Bed. tips of my shears I'm using inside my blade and you know what would actually be really cool for you razor cutters out there this haircut It'd be really cool to do with a razor I think absolutely this is definitely a shape that could be used with a razor oh somebody just said that uh the this is totally making her day she had to retire due to disability after 38 oh. years and miss is doing hair and this uh is making her day that makes us happy that makes me so Shapes really coming together. That was so pretty. Okay, cool. So now, very lightly going to slice through. Again, if you see any of this stuff that you don't love, just go in with the tips of your shears. And work your way down. Okay, so I don't want to leave this that long. <laughs> Somebody said that uh, she needs to find a stylist in her country and that she's actually going to take this video to her stylist. Oh, cool. Right on. That's really cool. And isn't it funny for those of you who have been watching the whole time how this has ended up? Like it's. It's, it's crazy because, like I said, I went through the artist process, you know, where I was where I was doing it at home and I was like, what am I doing? And then, you know, I got done and I polished everything and it's, it's so cool. It's just a different take on an A-line bob. It has a ton of texture. Again, not putting too much tension whenever I'm slicing through the hair. That shape's now really coming together. Yeah. Okay, cool. How's that look? Right Looks there. Looking good. That's cool. Well, here we are. Sorry, guys. I just want to see that little file. All right, I'm going to say just maybe a little bit more right through here, and then we're going to. And Savannah just logged on to tell you that she is so proud of you. Savannah, love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. 
Yeah, I'm really, really into that. All right, we're gonna leave it. I'll do more in a little bit. The thing about this kind of haircutting is, I gotta tell you, when you've got 30 minutes to be on the stage and that's it, keep it moving, you know, because chances are you'll, uh, you'll get time to perfect everything afterwards. And even then, you know, you probably did a lot better than you thought you did. All right, cool, so my body position is changing. Um, I'm gonna cut down toward me. And that might seem a little uncomfortable, but that's what I'm comfortable with. Um, I'm going to start just like I did on the other side. And don't, don't be scared about your balance. The reason that I say don't be scared about it is because this is so textured. Your balance and texture is, you know, it's, it's okay. Like, it's going to look fine. The only thing that you're really going to want to have balanced is your uh, length, I would say. Texture is going to vary all over the head, you know. Hair is weird. And, you know, sometimes it reacts differently on one side of the head, on the other, you know. And you just kind of have to accept that about it and be a little bit more free. So maintain your technique, but allow yourself to kind of just be free with this form of hair cutting. So the lady named Jackie just asked, uh, said, nice hair shape. Which make of scissors are you using? Van Michael. Yeah, she's using the, actually the Van Michael scissors. What size are those? Uh, five and a half. So she's using a five and a half semi offset. And what I'll do is uh, once we stop this video, I'll um, answer your comment and I'll give you a link to the website so you can see what she's using. It's wild because I gotta tell you, I've had so many brands of scissors that were you know, X amount of dollars and, you know, you purchase sometimes those scissors because of their price point and you, and you think that, you know, oh, well, these are going to be the best in the business. Well, I gotta tell you what, like, what are these doing? Like 250? Yeah, 240. It's, it's insane. These are the only things I use now. Scissor over comb, dry cutting, wet cutting. I use them for everything. Hands down the best I've had. It's really looking good. I really like that technique that she was using where she's actually slicing towards herself. It's made just such a very nice fluid moment. You can actually see from here. I mean, this line looks, I mean, it just flows together so perfectly already. And you can see what I'm using. I'm using my thumb isn't even all the way inside of my shear. I feel like that's pretty vital as far as doing something like this. Because I have a feeling if you were to do it more like this, you're really contorting in a really strange way. So I'm only using my thumb and kind of just lifting my shoulder over and above. And that's it, you know, like everything else is simple. It's one simple movement with my thumb. I'm not harming my wrist. Anybody else make noises when they cut hair? Okay. That looks great. I like that. Cool. Alright, so go down. Alright. Point cutting into not this. This is just like it's just textured enough at the bottom and just solid enough at the bottom. It's a really nice mix of the two. I'm going to go in very cleanly with the fine teeth of my comb. Whenever I place my finger, oops. Whenever I place my finger on one part of the head where I want to part to, it's almost like magic. You kind of just meet your finger there. I think that when you're even detailing your haircut as far as texturizing goes, you also need to be just as clean. So nothing feels better than seeing like a really, really nice pretty line. Also too, I've got that round, round mist to it. That's what you want to see. Cool. 
So I didn't distort my line at all. My line is still there. And that weight line is gone. Same thing over here. Placing my finger, drawing to my line. Excuse me, drawing my finger. Breaking up that weight with intention, not just because I feel like it, not just because it looks cool. Oh, man, that looks good. great. All right, last one. Cool. All right, one more time through here. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Ayers, one of your clients, actually just, uh... Oh, that's my aunt. Oh, it's your aunt. She oh, just, uh, went in and has just commented about how, uh, she loves, that she actually loves, uh, her hair. <laughs> and that you rock. I love you, Shelly. And then, uh, some people from California logging on now. Uh, some... People mentioning how much they love this style and uh, one person actually saying that they've been a hairdresser for 32 years and still love to learn techniques uh -huh. so thanks for sharing it that they love it Somebody said, would you ever go through and do that method throughout the entire haircut to break up the ends, starting in the nape and um, neck and moving to the top layers? Um, yeah, absolutely. If you the, want more texture on that underneath, you could definitely go through and point cut it. But I feel like because it was cut dry and because it was elevated as high as it was, we didn't really need to do that. Uh, one thing that we were also trying to achieve with the dry cutting was some volume. And if we would have... Um, point cut into that graduation, it would have collapsed it a bit more. And once it would collapse, it would not give quite the volume that it gives uh, to the panel above it. So you could absolutely do it, but kind of like what Becca was saying over and over is you want to point cut with intentions. You want to know why you're going to be doing some point cutting, not just because you like the idea of texturizing the hair. Sometimes yeah. shapes don't need to be texturized. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And some of us have such thin hair that it's already texturized. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> some of us have the sides cut off of our hair, too. Because <laughs> we have so much of it. All right, cool. So I'm going to place my comb, see where it leaves the head. Right about here is where I'm going to start my fringe section. So the reason that I wasn't so wild about like making sure that I was balanced and linked through the front is because I'm already going to take away a good bit of hair in my fringe. So I'll check everything one last time at the end. Flat clip. Fantastic. You know, I've always said that, like, I feel like bangs, fringe, whatever your verbiage may be, is, you know, time consuming also. So, you know, a lot of times, like, I will spend 15 minutes on a fringe. You know, it's the focal point of the haircut. And it, no matter if it's textured or solid or, you know, wispy, again, you know, it's, it's, it's worth spending time on simply because it's right there. So, I'm 
making sure you guys get a more textured fringe because you know we're going to stick with the theme today. Measure where the eyebrow would be. Make sure that I don't have any excess hair coming in here. Okay. All right, I'm going to just cut this initial line. Again, just like everything we've said thus far, be patient with yourself and let that expansion happen. You can always detail it at the end. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit more severe, just because I can. All right, so I'm not going to pivot because then I'll lose length and it'll round up and I don't want that. I want to preserve a little bit of length. So I'm just going to do what I've been doing. I'm going to invert everything to the center. She kind of looks like she's from the grudge with that little bit right there. Okay. Going back to the center, over directing, pulling toward myself. And I guess you could lump everything into one big section and just cut it and watch it fall. You know, like, you can do that, but I don't like doing that. I like everything to be meticulous and interesting and, you know, doing things section by section, you know, it makes it worth doing. It makes it fun. Okay. Sorry, y'all, I'm not OCD. All right, cool. I'm gonna tilt her up just a teeny bit. All right. Everything we've done today has been just a matter of detailing. I don't want to elevate too much, so I'm going to tuck that hair into the comb. Yeah, the fringe is starting to come together now.
She's the person, dude. She went down an right now. I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> Again, sorry for being quiet. I just, this is all detailing. This is all up to you and the way that you want to do things, you know? And I just get hyper-focused. And, you know, again, like, I feel like I just see so many people just pick up things and just do, 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 just chip into them like that. And I just, again, like, I feel like everything you do should be meticulous. Everything you do should have heart and effort. So take your time. Textured hair needs time and care. However, I will say this. I've done this before, and just watch your, watch your hiney. Um, I uh, one time was point cutting into somebody's hair, and I went too deep and cut her hairline off. You know who you are if you're watching. I love you. I'm sorry. Um, she's still a good friend. <laughs> I've, I've messed up before. So just be careful. Sometimes, even when you're being meticulous, things happen. That looks really good. Like it. it reminds me of Lorelai's bangs. You yeah. I love those little bangs. I'm going to come in here, cut toward myself. Somebody said that uh, watching this uh, reminds them of when they used to cut their baby dolls. Hair. Oh my God. significantly more challenging on a mannequin. I won't even lie to you. I don't know what it is. I, I guess it's the, you know, the lack of stretch on the scalp, like the sewing, like what have you, like, but it's significantly more challenging for sure. For me, anyway. A lot of it, a lot of it just has to do with the texture of the hair is just so much um, stronger. Totally. It has a tendency to react more than natural human hair. I gotta tell you, man, like taking classes with Doug Palmer and, you know, watching Zagat do their thing, like that one time they were here in Atlanta, like I, I've, I've got the utmost respect for y'all. Like, because I mean, the way that you guys detail doll heads is something I'm like, I've ever seen. It's amazing. Right now I'm, I'm tilting my scissor a little bit. I'm going more jagged in here. So somebody just asked, you know, when you're cutting in that close to the hairline mm -hmm. of the bangs, mm -hmm. do you have to worry about those short hairs that might stick out? Absolutely. Probably. Has to do with, totally has to do with the texture of the hair. We had mentioned earlier, this is really silky hair, so you can get away with a little bit more aggressive of texturizing. But when you start dealing with somebody who's got much stronger, harder hair, you don't necessarily want to do the, well, that. Well, and cowlicks too, dude. Like, yeah. you know, I remember doing, uh, you know, Porsche's hair for a class at one time and I gave her a super textured bang, so, yeah. That looks great. All right, cool. All right, I'm gonna leave. So, so now we're just gonna check for balance. Dude, she looks great. Yeah. That's a great look all together. Cool. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm gonna take her off and show. Yeah, all right. Get my camera. Cool. Yeah. 
So just to reiterate guys, this is an undercut uh, nape with basically like classic graduated bob sectioning, then a kind of a rounded shape with flat layering in the back, and then use the crown as the guide for some concave, both in technique and in shape through the top with some natural inversion, and then a really nice strong fringe that has been texturized. Absolutely beautiful cut. Thanks. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you soon.